The UN set the Sustainable Development Goals, known as the SDGs, and there were 17 because it was really thinking about the world is so complex with all these social and environmental problems and everyone was going off in different directions, solving problems in different ways. And it's been a sort of campaign really um, to say, well, let's align, let's choose focus areas and put our energy behind verticals that we can clearly measure and track. And then we know how we're getting on and people can stay in their lanes and do what they've got to do and align and collaborate with the right people. Because at Investec we cannot focus on all 17 goals, we have prioritized six of them. These are um, clean water and sanitation, clean energy and good quality education, which all leads to the goal number eight, decent work and economic growth, which is the goal of today. When we looked at you know, designing this event, how are we going to position it, what, what is tech for good, and we, we did a lot of research and you know, you, one usually looks to Silicon Valley for the, the latest trends in tech and innovation. And so there was a lot of scrounging around in articles and reading up case studies. And we thought we would learn the latest from the Ubers and the Airbnb unicorn type business models. But through that research, we actually came across a new type of business that combines profitability and technology and good. And lucky for us at Investec, I mean, it couldn't be more on brand, they're known as zebras. And they're termed a zebra um, for a few reasons. One, um, it's not the mythical creature of a unicorn, it's a real life animal, like a real world problem. Um, they're black and white, so they're looking at both t uh, social good and profitability. And by their very nature, they tend to be more collaborative. Um, so they're sort of seen as moving in herds. So really nice um, paradigm verticals there for us. And I just think it was a really great opportunity to use that as the case study. And you're really seeing some amazing businesses come out of that. Another thing that was really important um, about, about the series was kind of how it aligned to our recent brand campaign. Um, an excellent job was done around showing how disruption and innovation plays a part in daily lives for our clients. But it can also be a little bit scary and intimidating. And part of this event was to showcase some of those examples of technology like blockchain or predictive analytics and show the good that they can do and almost help educate and share knowledge around technology in, an, in a way that's not intimidating but actually quite accessible and a way that you can think about how this technology is doing good in the world. Uh, so that was important for us in showcasing the potential or the art of the possible. We partnered with the Bertha Center. Um, the Bertha Center sits within UCT's Graduate School of Business. Um, it's a unit that's known as a Learn Do. So they do research in the field of social innovation and innovative finance, but they also run programs themselves. So they're living their work. And I think what was important for us is we know a lot about a lot, but to bring in experts that actually do this every day and for them to help us curate the content and bring in the right speakers as partners in thought leadership was critical for us and they've just been perfect at that. I think what makes us unique compared to a lot of other academic centers is the do part. So we take a very active part in shaping the market we want to see. So that means creating new innovative finance instruments where we are there from the point of creation, so to conceptualizing an innovative finance mechanism, to bringing stakeholders on board to the fundraising, to creating the governance structure, to putting it out there in the market, be that social impact bond for early childhood development, or the outcomes fund that we're currently contracting for. We have social innovation as one of the only business schools in the world where social innovation is a mandatory part of doing your MBA. So we strongly believe that that is a competitive advantage for the business school to be seen as an emerging market leader in impact investing, innovative finance, social business models. When we looked at creating the theme of um, decent work, decent economy, what became obvious was a common thread was financial inclusion. So we reached out to the experts and it, we didn't have to go far to find Nikki Kettles. She's the um, head of the Finmark Trust 
and the Finnmark Trust is a think tank or research body that actually informs regulation and policy for the whole of the Southern African region around how we help those that need to be financially included. So they do a lot of research on um, savings platforms, microloans, mobile money, um, insurance for low income communities so that people become not only accessible in terms of creating formal financial products, but also how do we get products and services that are actually making people more financially resilient. Financial inclusion to certain sectors of the market is quite a strange concept and idea because most of us grow up from when we're very, very little, just assuming we have a bank account and we have a debit card and we can go anywhere and get credit and mom and dad will just get a student loan and it becomes part and parcel of our lives. What we don't realize is that there's a lot of people, a lot of people in South Africa and on this continent that don't have access to formal financial services. So I think that's why the concept of financial inclusion sometimes is, is almost a bit nebulous and, and we don't grasp it properly. But the bottom line is we know if you can get people formally included. By formally included, we mean give them access to a formal financial service, they've got a greater chance of uplifting out of poverty. So this is about bringing people into formal systems for a whole lot of reasons. One of them being firstly, if I have formal financial services, I have access to products that help me to meet my needs daily. So tomorrow I need to lend money. Instead of having to go down the road to a friend, an informal lender, and lend money at an exorbitant rate. If I have some sort of track record, I can go and get appropriate lending at the appropriate rates. Same with saving. If I'm saving for someone, instead of keeping it under my mattress, if I can put it somewhere because I have a history and start earning interest, I can meet my needs. So financial inclusion is about trying to bring people into a formal system of allowing them to meet their financial needs. And that's why it's so important. This event is looking at a, a, at a phenomenon that we're seeing emerging now around how technology is coming to the party in terms of solving social challenges. So the event is really about showcasing the examples of tech startups and ventures in Cape Town that are looking at some of the biggest problems that face people and planet and how they're actually tackling those problems, not only using the latest in technology and innovation, but also the interesting ways that they're funding themselves as sustainable businesses going forward. We have Sweep South, Abalobi and Mama Money. Sweep South is a, a platform in the form of an app and a website that connects domestic workers who are experienced but who are either unemployed or underemployed with customers who are looking for their services and we do it in a way that's meant to be very convenient, quick and easy to use, but also that um, sets the work at a decent pay rates. Unemployment is obviously a big issue in South Africa. We've just had the last quarterly um, labor force review released and um, we saw that unemployment figures have risen and we know that unemployment figures are even higher um, in amongst black women in the country than they are amongst the general population. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is, is again to connect people with work but to do it in a way that sets specific rates that constitute um, what we feel is closer to a, a decent wage. And so um, you have you know, women who are not earning a lot, um, lots of customers or employers who aren't aware really what they should be paying, they aren't aware what um, many domestic workers' costs are. And so what we've tried to do is, you know, the first is set rates. Um, through the platform and you know and have minimum rates but the other thing is try and make all of this information available about um, what people are earning on average what people should be paying what people's living domestic workers living costs are and then release that information to the public so that there, there is better awareness um, so that's one thing and the other thing is that we've tried to really view technology and um, the phone that people use to access the services and particularly domestic workers who access work through the phone um, we've tried to turn that into a vehicle that can be used to, to provide other services and other benefits. And so once you're using your phone to get jobs through Sweep South, our question is why can't you use the phone to get access to educational courses, to other financial services that are relevant to you and your family, um, to information about public health, about um, domestic abuse, about... So um, we view the phone as something that can be used to, uh, to really open up 
um, the world to people and, and get them more opportunities than would otherwise be available. Abelobi is a, is a traceability platform, but it's a pl traceability platform that has products and services for different users, from the fisher to the fisher cooperative to the supply chain partner, which very often is this cooperative, to of course the restaurant and the patron. Um, it offers the opportunity for fishers to use a mobile app and record their catches, but not just their catches, also their expense, their income, and kind of slowly but surely build an, a balance sheet and build an opportunity to manage their finances better, especially if you think about fuel, fuel expenses, bait expenses, fishing on different reefs for different species. Suddenly, you know, there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to go beyond the, the, the notebook they have to a product, to a dashboard that allows them to kind of better manage their, their operation and to have proof that they, um, that they fish and that fishing is their primary livelihood. That then connects, of course, with the supply chain platform that pushes the data through the value chain and, of course, the product through, um, through, through the supply chain. Um, the restaurants, the chefs, have um, Abelobi Marketplace, which you can download um, from the Play Store, from the App Store. They register and they get that window into that world. Um, on top of that, um, there's a safety at sea tool, and that's not cell phone based, that's radio and satellite based. Cell phones, you know, you're a mile out at sea, a couple of miles out at sea, you can forget about cell phone reception. So there's sort of tracking devices which connect with the, with, with the logbook. And then there's this payment platform. The payment platform is the, probably the most critical part because fishers are usually paid in cash. Um, they cannot wait for the restaurant to pay 30 days later or the buyer to pay 30 days later. There needs to be an, in trans in, uh, an instant transaction. It also needs to be fully transparent and digital. And that's what we run. What's exciting about that is that suddenly we're formalizing an informal fishery. We're formalizing an informal fishery, we're creating a logbook, we're creating a transaction history for a fisher, a fisher family, a fisher cooperative, which then they can use to access financial services from insurance to um, potentially credit, especially at cooperative level, to, to savings opportunities, which they would have never been able to access before. Mama Money is the world's first social business money transfer operator. Uh, so essentially we help migrant workers who um, send money home to their families across borders, so international remittances, uh, low cost money transfers across the border. Well, we, we looked at how um, expensive money transfers were and how antiquated the sort of branch to branch, cash to cash model worked. And we saw that the development in mobile technology um, and the access to mobile phones that the people had on, on the African continent as an opportunity to use tech to reduce the cost of international money transfers. So on the receiving side, we had the advancement of mobile money like in Kenya with M-Pesa and across the continent with other deployments. And in South Africa, we saw it as a way to have a branchless business where customers can use their cell phone to add recipients, create orders and send money home to their loved ones. We sometimes look at ourselves as a poverty alleviation program that's dressed up as a remittance business. Uh, the high cost of remittances means that, um, and obviously what the remittance is used for, um, the research shows is that the more money that arrives home is used for food, so better nutrition, uh, it's used for education, um, and it's used for medicine and other basic amenities. So by lowering the cost of international money transfer and allowing more money to arrive home um, into people's pockets, pop, uh, pockets, we allow um, more access to food and, and medicine and education. You know, if we're going to understand the problem and we're going to hear these exciting, new, trendy technology innovation ventures, that's all very well and good, but how do we fund them going forward? How do we make them scale? How do we grow them as businesses so that they're sustainable? I think there's a, a new trend that shows that um, these social enterprises have legs. It's no longer just about donor money anymore. Sometimes it really helps to have a business model behind the social good as well. The challenge with most of these environments is people don't want to invest in them until these businesses are at a state where they're turning around. And if we can start getting people to really just 
to just take that leap of faith, you know, some angel type of investors to have a look at it and to say, hold on, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm happy to put some money into this to grow it and then maybe put it into an impact investment or maybe into formal investment because there's a big gap there. There's a really, really, really big gap. And you know, you know what they say, if you have money, it's easy to make more money. But there's a lot of really creative solutions coming out of different areas that are not getting the traction because they don't have it. So for me, I think that this type of initiative and the initiative that all of the, the banking environments are looking at, linking to SDGs and trying to nudge it along is really important. Traditionally, we use impact investing. That's a concept we've kind of been using. That's intentionality, measurability, um, cuts across asset classes and has some level of financial return. So that speaks very much to direct investment and investment strategies. Now, innovative finance is an umbrella term that also speaks to the fact that we can develop social impact bonds, that we can think about uh, value creation and profit generation and all that in different ways, that we can think about conservation capital in very new ways. So it, it kind of becomes an umbrella term for everything programmatic, investable enterprises, investment strategies, etc. But I think also one of the big trends in innovative finance at the moment is saying, how do we actually make it very palatable for mainstream investors as well? So kind of balancing out that innovation angle, because sometimes we get carried away and we create something that is so innovative that then the market is going to struggle to kind of catch up to that. So increasingly that is a trend in innovative finance that we are uh, we want mainstream players on board and that's also why it's super exciting to see Investec being part of these conversations, right? And kind of do that co-creation of how we can drive more capital towards social environmental outcomes.